What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode with Broke Girls Art School. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing some real-time and some time-lapse action of this latest tattoo that I just did. Yeah, this tattoo actually went on one of my best friends, so of course that's always more fun, right? Um, but yeah, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see some future content from me. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop a comment. Um, I'll tag um, some supplies and everything through my Amazon affiliate if you guys are interested in getting anything. They will be listed for you, but yeah, otherwise, enjoy the video. All right, so first things first, always got to make sure that stencil is nice and centered. Um, I really loved how this design fit the back of her calf, and I wanted to make sure that it kind of tapered down to her ankle quite a bit. Um, so I kept it pretty open with like mainly just line work for the background and stuff because she wanted some geometry. So pretty happy with how it turned out. And then to start here, I was using my 11 round liner. Um, for my machine, I use the Cheyenne Sol Nova. And then for my cartridges, I mainly use Prime and Flax, which I get off with Kingpin. Really like their needles though, they're super consistent. So here is still with my 11 round liner. I always like to ease into things, especially on the back of the calf, because I feel like that's definitely the most twitchy place on people, <laughs> where they have like no control over their muscles flexing. So I usually like to kind of proceed with caution a little bit until I know how people are gonna react. Um, she was really good for the first like hour and a half, two hours, and then towards that final stretch, we definitely had a bit of the nerves, <laughs> a bit of the nerves firing. Yeah, I don't have the back of my calves done yet, but I've never heard good things, <laughs> pain-wise. Yeah, and on my paper towel, I usually just start with like a little bit of water on there and just dab so that way I'm not like wiping off my stencil or smearing around the black ink. And I did just start using inkies like to spread on the skin opposed to like A&D or Vaseline. And I highly, highly recommend spending the extra money. It's like so much thinner and so much easier to spread around and my cartridges don't get clogged nearly as much. And I feel like you use half the amount that you do because it's so nice and fine. So you probably end up spending less money anyway. Here we are, back to the time lapse. So yeah, all these like circles in the flower of life, I am using my 11 for, and same with those uh, few lines I have at the bottom so far. Um, I'm gonna be going in, I'll usually take like whatever liner I think I'm gonna be using most and like knock out most of the lines in the piece with that size liner, and then I'll go back in either with, you know, my bigger or smaller ones and just kind of chip away that way. And here I'm using my 11 round shader. So it's quite a bit thicker of a line than just the liner is. Um, honestly, once you get above like an 11 or a 14 round liner, I like to just switch to using shaders. You gotta move a bit slower and sometimes you gotta do two passes on the lines, but they're really nice and thick and bold. Yeah, another thing with Prime and Flex, they have very good round shaders. I usually never have a problem with like ink flow. They work pretty darn well for me. So 
Yeah, you'll see my hand's moving a lot slower here than it is when I'm using like my seven round liner and my three round liner. I usually run my machine, I have a critical power supply and I usually run it at 10.3 um, volts, volts for most of my liners. And then when I get down to like a three or a bug pin three, then I'll just put it down one notch to 10.2. Just cause those slice into the skin so much easier. So now I'm gonna be using my seven round liner. Yeah, guys, it's really important with line work to keep the same depth and to watch the angle that you're going in with your needle. Consistency is key. Because if you're going in one part of the skin, even with the same needle, if you're not going as deep in one spot than you do in another spot, then that line thickness is gonna be different. Yeah, I definitely recommend taking your time with line work. I mean, I physically can't move that fast with this machine. I'm sure if, you know, when you're using a coil machine and stuff, you can move a lot quicker and still punch those lines in. But yeah, with the Cheyenne, it's not as uh, heavy hitting. So you gotta slow down your hand quite a bit. Yeah, and for this pointillism, um, right here is my seven round liner, and I'm only gonna be using that in the more saturated, like dark area. And then when I go to spread out the dots, you know, uh, higher up, then I'll be using my bug pen three round liner. I know doing little pointillism like this can be super tedious, but it has a really cool effect if you take your time to spread it out nice and evenly, and looks very nice. And I wanted to create a little bit more dimension with the design than just like putting the skull in front of the geometry. So I tried to bring a couple of the lines and aspects of it um, to be in the foreground, to be in front of the skull. So now I'm going in with my bug pin three round liner.
Yeah, and I wanted the little like cracks in the skull to look really organic, so you'll see I'm moving my hand up and down quite a bit, just these little ticks up and down to give it more of a realistic feel. And adding a little bit of shadowing in the cracks as well. Yeah, I feel like most of the time my clients think that this my tiniest needle is way more painful than my big fat needles. <laughs> Maybe size doesn't matter. So for a lot of the shading in the face, I actually used my uh, Bug Pin 3 round liner. I like doing that for like small areas that I want to have like a bit of contrast in and different values. I feel like it gives you kind of like ultimate freedom with how much detail you can put in. Yeah, and if you guys want to get like more of a prominent like stipple effect, then all you'd have to do is slow down your voltage and slow down your hand a little bit, and you'd have a lot more spacing um, in between the needle marks. And I'm just staying at the very, very surface of the skin, so I'm able to go over it so many times without it getting irritated at all but still getting those nice, um, those nice shadows. You can see I'm going over the same area quite a bit and her skin's like not even really getting red. Of course, a little red, but <laughs> it's important not to chew up your clients. Yeah, I'd much rather have to like go over something twice than go in too deep the first time around and scar them up, you know? So now I am using my Bug Pin 7 Curved Mag. It's usually my go-to with smaller pieces. So usually when I'm doing black and gray shading, I'll like pull the ink in two directions. So here I'm going in from the outer line and kind of dragging that gray wash in. And then later I'll go down and go in the opposite direction to smooth it out a little bit. So it's pulling in from that outer line and I'm gonna pull down.
A lot of times I'll like to go in with like a mid-tone gray wash first and then I'll go in afterwards and maybe add in some like heavier blacks and accentuate my darker areas. Same thing with my mag here. I'm just staying super close to the surface of the skin. Black and gray is definitely a lot less aggressive than color packing. And it's nice being able to do so many passes over the skin. Just always keep in mind the direction that you're pushing your mag. The direction that you do your shading is really important. As you can see like there is using short little movements to pack in that small area of black like I said gotta take advantage of your contrast and then just kind of smoothing that out with some nice long strokes Right, and here we are with the final product. 